The Mercury cyclone spanned four generations from 1964 until its discontinuation in 1971. In 1970, the car entered its final generation. The top of the line had a 429 Super Cobra jet engine that delivered 375 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. This engine is equipped with a ram air induction, a Holley four-barrel carburetor, and the drag pack option, which includes a 3.91 to 1 or 430 to 1 rear axle ratio, an engine oil cooler, and a heavy-duty radiator. The Cyclone Spoiler also has a competition suspension package and a Hearst T-Handle four-speed manual transmission. On the flat, this spoiler could dance up to 125 miles per hour and has a 0 to 60 time of around 6 seconds. Only 1,631 Cyclone Spoilers were produced in 1970, and only 341 of them had the 429 SCJ. This makes it one of the most sought-after and valuable Mercury muscle cars of all time. The Oldsmobile Rally 350 was a one-year-only muscle car with a fiberglass hood, a rear spoiler, and too much yellow. It was introduced on February 18, 1970, by Oldsmobile General Manager John Belts and made its debut at the 1970 Chicago Auto Show. It was designed to compete with other low-cost performance models like the Dart 340 and the Roadrunner. Under the hood, this beast housed a 350 V8 that rumbled with 310 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. You could choose to tame this wild stallion with either a smooth turbo hydromatic 350 automatic or a four-speed manual. Sadly, the Rally 350's reign was short-lived. It was discontinued after 1970 and never repeated. Only 3,547 units were produced, making it a rare and collectible car today. The AMC AMX is a two-seat GT-style muscle car produced by American Motors Corporation from 1968 through 1970. It was based on the Javelin but with a shorter wheelbase and a more powerful engine. In 1970, both the Javelin and the two-seat AMX received a substantial one-year-only facelift that added an air of muscle to its appearance. This was due largely in part to the ram air hood with the split center scoop from the AMX. The 1970 model year also saw the AMX get a new, bolder hood. The AMX was also available with the Go package, which included performance upgrades such as a 390 V8 engine, a four-speed manual transmission, a dual exhaust system, a heavy-duty suspension, and a twin-grip differential. This car was a competitor to the Chevrolet Corvette, but it was less expensive and more rare. Only 4,116 units were produced in 1970, making it a highly collectible car today. The Monte Carlo SS 454 was a rare and powerful version of the first-generation Monte Carlo. It was a unique combination of luxury and performance a grand tourer with muscle car prowess. The SS454 package included a 360 horsepower 7.4 liter V8 engine, a turbo hydromatic three-speed automatic transmission, and a heavy-duty suspension. It was also the first Chevrolet model to be used in NASCAR racing, with Junior Johnson driving a modified Monte Carlo SS454 to the pole position at the 1971 World 600. The SS454 package was only offered for two years, 1970 and 1971, and was discontinued after that. Only 3,823 units were produced in 1970 and 1,919 in 1971. In 1971, GMC began producing the Sprint, their version of the Chevrolet El Camino. This light-duty pickup truck was identical to the El Camino except for the name. The Sprint SP, which was equivalent to the El Camino SS, was an optional trim package only available under the custom and was labeled RPO YE7. The SP454 is top of the line with a 7.4-liter V8 engine, making 365 horsepower and featuring a cowl induction system that increases airflow to the engine. This is GMC's highest-rated horsepower vehicle of its era. Only 249 sprints rolled off the line that year, and just 25 of them were the top dog SP-454. Today, it's estimated that only 16 of those rare beauties still roam the roads, making them true automotive unicorns. 
The 1971 Pontiac GT37 was a budget-friendly muscle car that offered GTO-like performance without a high price tag. It was based on the Le Mans hardtop coupe but had a sportier appearance. It was designed to compete with the Plymouth Roadrunner, offering a stripped-down package with a powerful engine and sporty features. Under the hood, you could choose your own soundtrack. The standard 250 ponies V8 was a decent kick in the pants, but if you craved something meaner, a 400 or even a fire-breathing 455 HO with 335 horses were just a rev away. However, the GT37 story is one of fleeting glory. Its two-year reign was overshadowed by its big brother, the GTO, leaving it a rare and slightly obscure gem. Only 5,802 units saw the light of day in 1971, and a mere 69 of those sported the legendary 455 V8. Today, they're coveted by collectors who appreciate a muscle car that dared to be different, even if it didn't quite steal the show. The Laguna name was introduced as the top-tier luxury trim on the third-generation A-body Chevelle in 1973, slotting above the Malibu. The Laguna S3 debuted a year later in 1974 and lasted until 1976. It replaced the Chevelle SS and essentially transformed the luxury Laguna trim into a performance model. The Laguna S3 had a distinctive body-colored urethane front end that concealed the 5 mph bumper system. It also had a semi-fastback roofline, S3 badges, rally wheels, and a lower body two-tone stripe. The Laguna S3 was powered by various V8 engines ranging from 305 to 454 cubic inches, roared to life. Sadly, Chevy shifted gears in 1976, making the Monte Carlo their leading personal luxury car, leaving the S3A rare and sought-after classic with only 38,790 lucky examples ever built. The 1974 Pontiac Ventura GTO was the last and the least powerful of the legendary GTO models. It was based on the compact Ventura, which shared its platform with the Chevrolet Nova. Under the hood, a 350 V8 with a four-barrel carb churned out 200 horses and 295 pound-feet of torque, enough to give it some pep in its smaller package. It also featured a hood scoop, dual exhausts, rally wheels, and GTO badges. While the 74 GTO offered decent performance and a lower price tag, some gearheads grumbled that it lacked the punch and panache of earlier GTOs. It didn't help that the muscle car world was facing a triple whammy, the oil crisis, stricter emissions regulations, and skyrocketing insurance costs. With only 7,058 units sold, the 1974 GTO became the rarest and least popular of the bunch, marking the bittersweet end of an era. In 1976, the Roadrunner's engine roared a little fainter. Muscle car glory days were fading, and the iconic bird found itself hitching a ride on the smaller, fuel-economical Plymouth Volare. It was a valiant attempt to keep the muscle car spirit alive in a changing world, but the Roadrunner faced an uphill battle. Gas pumps ran dry and emissions tightened their grip. Forget fire-breathing power plants. The base Roadrunner sported a 318 V8 that barely mustered 150 horsepower. That's enough to get you from A to B, but it won't leave your hair blowing in the wind. For a bit more pep, you could opt for the 360 V8, but even its 220 horsepower peak with a four-barrel carb wouldn't set your speedometer on fire. Speed demons and quarter-mile kings looked elsewhere, leaving the Roadrunner to chirp its tune for a smaller, more practical crowd.